Good day, everybody. Darren Yankee with Akawai Farms. We're looking at corn today. This field was planted, I think it was the 12th of May. We planted 60 inch corn out in part of this field for a trial. I think we got like three, three and a half acres of 60 inch corn out here. We did this because we're interseeded this piece with uh, multi-species mix of cover crops. So about four days ago, we came out here and broadcast seed it with a spinner spreader mounted on the back of the tractor, this cover crop mix. The spinner spreader spread the cover crop about 30 feet so we had to uh, make a pass every 30 feet just like you would with the corn planter. So I'm out here just trying to see if I find anything happening yet. We had an inch of rain that came the day after we broadcasted the seed out into the field. And it's been warm and dry ever since that. So let's look at the residue on top of the soil surface right now. There's not a whole lot. There's actually a fair bit of bare soil out here. And this is a piece that was winter wheat last year. We had planted a multi-species cover crop mix after winter wheat. And then we came out here and grazed that cover crop off last November. So going into spring, when we plant the corn out in this particular field, there was a nice green carpet of vetch and some regrowth of winter wheat, some rye that we had planted in the mix, along with a couple brassicas that did make it through the winter, and a couple different types of clovers. So we had a nice green mat that I planted into out in this field. And you could just see a month after we terminated the cover crop, our soil life is really active and is breaking down this residue at a rapid pace. And I'd say it's really breaking it down too fast because we want to make sure that we have our ground protected at all times. And that's why we're trying to interseed the corn with cover crops as well. I do believe I found a little plant. You can see that little guy right there. Common. That would probably be from the interseeding mix. It's so hard to see. Like I say, we did it such a short time ago. A lot of the little seeds that got planted. So hopefully there's a whole bunch of stuff out here that's going to be common. But there's another little one common there. Up here is another one common. So there's stuff out here. It's like I say, it's a little too early to be checking on this. We do have a couple other grasses that are growing. And hopefully these cover crop seeds that we planted will kind of smother out the stuff that's already there. We have a pretty clean field for the most part, really clean. So like I said, we have the 60 inch corn and this was supposed to be planted at about 25,000 seeds to the acre, but it got planted at 40,000 seeds to the acre in the 60 inch corn. So. The corn plants are stacked up and they're pretty heavy. Because remember, normally we plant 30 inch corn. So over here in the next pass, we did 12 rows of 30 inch corn, but we planted these at a lower population. So this is planted at 22,000 seeds to the acre. Now we did this as a test to check if a lower population of corn 
will allow more sunlight to hit the ground to help these cover crops succeed. Because, you know, we want the corn for grain as a revenue off of this field, but we do have the opportunity to graze this piece off again this fall. So if we get some tons out here of forage for the cattle to graze, that's definitely a benefit. And then we'll go over here and we'll go back into our normal planting population. So now this is back into plants that are planted at 34,000 seeds to the acre. They come up here, we'll see if we find any little seeds popping down in here that have germinated. Here I got something at the end of my finger there is common. Looks like something we probably planted. There's another one up here. So there's definitely stuff coming. I just hope that it takes off and we did it a couple days earlier than we wanted to, but we did it then because we knew we would be getting rain the day after, because that's really critical. They need to have a rain shortly after you plant it, the cover crop seed that is, because we're just broadcasting on top of the ground. We want that rain to kind of work that seed down into the nooks and crannies and the crevices. Like here, you see that crevice there. Now that rain will wash some of the seeds down into them crevices to help them germinate and grow. And after that rain, we have a week of dry weather coming. So like, well, if we don't do it at that time, we would be doing it like today, we'll say, and we're not going to have rain for a week according to what the weatherman tells us. So we thought it was really important to do it at that particular time, which I think was an ideal timing. The rain we did get, that inch of rain I was talking about, was a little on the heavier side, which could wash the seeds off of the field as well. But we took a gamble on it and we'll hope for the best. When it comes a month from now, hopefully this will be a green mat of cover crop growing underneath the corn. So we're pretty excited about it. This is a trial that we're doing with the Sand County Foundation. So they're doing some studies out in this particular field with pounds of material that are out here of the cover crop. They take it, they weigh it, they figure out how many pounds are out here and what we're producing off these certain acres. And they're checking soil health parameters to see how healthy our soils are. And if we're increasing any of the soil health benefits by using the cover crops and grazing the livestock out here. Because the big thing with the San County Foundation project that we're working on them with is grazing the cover crops out in this particular field. It's a three year study. And this is our second year in the study. So it'll be going into soybeans next year we gotta figure out what we're gonna do after soybeans for a cover crop to potentially graze that off again. But anyways, that's a little bit about the trial we're doing with the 60 inch corn. Thank you all for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day. Don't forget to subscribe and like.